it is right for us to praise you in Zion and keep our promises to you. Because you answer prayers, people everywhere will come to you on account of their sins. Our faults defeat us, but you forgive them. Happy are those whom you choose, whom you bring to live in your sanctuary. We shall be satisfied with the good things of your house, the blessings of your sacred temple. A blessed morning to all our viewers and listeners nationally and regionally and all our participants. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. On this episode of Moments of Inspiration and Outreach Initiative of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago, I am Mrs. Neela Rampasad Ramsing, the Acting Principal of the Navet Presbyterian Primary School. This morning, members of our staff and students are blessed with the wonderful opportunity of sharing in this worship experience. As we commence our program today, we focus on the topic, Thanksgiving. Let me first take this opportunity to share with you a brief history of the Navet Presbyterian Primary School. The Navet Presbyterian Primary School is situated along the Kunapo Southern Main Road in the remote district of Navet Village, Rio Claro. It was formerly known as the Navet Canadian Missionary School. The school had its official opening ceremony on Sunday the 23rd of March 1930. It was a dream come true for the residents of this rural village. This was the only hope for the villagers to get an education. The school was constructed by residents of Navet who worked arduously using handsaw and axe to erect a two-story wooden structure. The building was constructed on wooden pillars with only the top floor used for classes at the time. The first log entry was written in 1930 by the manager of the school, Reverend George Murray. I quote, It is the earnest desire of your manager that perfect harmony will prevail between members of the teaching staff always, that the same goodwill may prevail between the teaching staff and the parents, and that through working together in unity and love, this school will prove a blessing to the entire community, that all may know the truth, and that the truth may set them free. End quote. On the first day of school, the teacher in charge was Mr. Jawahir. There were 20 students present. Soon afterward, Mr. Jawahir accepted a promotion elsewhere and Mr. Joseph McKenzie took full charge of the Navet CM School as its head teacher. He was assisted by Mr. Norman Kisto and Miss Albertina Baptiste. The school had its first formal inspection on the 8th of March 1932 by Mr. John Stoa, Senior Inspector of Schools. As the years went by, the enrollment of students increased, resulting in a simultaneous increase in teachers. The Navet CM School was also renamed the Navet Presbyterian Primary School. After 52 years of construction, the wooden structure became unsuitable for use. The decrepit building was beyond repair. It had to be demolished in 1982. Whilst construction of the new school building was underway, the students and staff were decanted to the nearby Kush Government School and operated on a shift system for approximately two years. On the 22nd of October 1984, the flat concrete building which is currently in use today was formally opened. The phrase up whatever was adopted as the school's motto, encouraging constant upward mobility in not only academics, but every aspect of one's life. Presently, the school's enrollment stands at 108 students. The staff consists of an acting principal, seven teachers, four cleaners, one business office assistant, and three on-the-job trainees. Indeed, a most humble beginning to set in motion an institution of learning 
of which the people of Navet and all those who pass within its hallowed walls can be justly proud. As we prepare to receive the word of God, please join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in your house to worship, honor, and thank you. Father, you are glorious and wonderful. You loved us so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to die for our sins. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive your love. Open our minds to hear your word and open our hands to receive your grace. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in many ways and we have not loved you with all of our hearts, souls, and minds. Help us to recognize the wrong that we have done and lead us to do better. Forgiving Father, restore to us the joy of your salvation. Give light to our minds and strength to our will. Forgive us, Father, as we have sinned in thought, word, and deed so many times, but we trust that you will never leave us or forsake us. Inspire us to do better and not be led astray. We ask these mercies and blessings in your most holy and precious name. Amen. is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 138. It is entitled, A Prayer of Thanksgiving. Let us listen to the word of God. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. I sing praise to you before the gods. I face your holy temple, bow down, and praise your name. Because of your constant love and faithfulness, because you have shown that your name and your commands are supreme, you answered me when I called to you. 
with your strength you strengthen me. All the kings in the world will praise you, Lord, because they have heard your promises. They will sing about what you have done and about your great glory. Even though you are so high above, you care for the lowly and the proud cannot hide from you. When I am surrounded by troubles, you keep me safe. You oppose my angry enemies and save me by your power. You will do everything you have promised. Lord, your love is eternal. Complete the work that you have begun. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. together in prayer. Great God, we thank you for this opportunity once again to share your word. Come now in the power of your Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, today our theme for meditation is Thanksgiving. And our text is taken from the psalmist, Psalm's selection 138, focusing on verses 1, 2, and 3. Being thankful is more than simply saying, thank God for what he has done for me. It is gratitude to God for his character and faithfulness. We gather today to give thanks, and hopefully not only to give thanks, but to feel thankful. Although some of us don't feel thankful, we feel worried, we feel anxious, concerned, lonely, distressed, or just plain bored. But I still ask the question, what are you thankful to God for? David's praise came from a thankful heart. He describes how he shares a thankful heart for God. Verse 1 and 2 says, I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing your praise before the heavenly beings. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give you thanks to your name for your constant love and truth. You have exalted your name and your promise above everything else. God's love is the most basic reason to thank God. He loves us enough to create each one of us, to save us, and to help us. And so we thank God for who he is. The words thank and think comes from thinking about our blessings. Paul's letter to the church in Philippi reminds us of the great joy of thanksgiving. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
So we can rejoice in the Lord as Paul did and as the psalmist did. We rejoice knowing that we are thankful. We are thankful because we are connected to Almighty God. In order to rejoice in the Lord always, it is essential to develop an attitude of gratitude, a heart full of gratitude. As the psalmist says, I will sing praises to you. I will praise your name. I will thank you forever. The opening of Paul's letter begins with a word of thanksgiving. I thank my God every time I remember you. He writes from a prison cell, giving God thanks for every opportunity he got. Paul reminds us to let our lives be filled with thanksgiving every day. When we make our requests known to God in prayer, Paul reminds us to do so with hearts full of thanksgiving. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Let your requests be made known to God. Our lives as Christians should be filled with thanksgiving. Every day should be a day filled with gratitude for what the Lord has done for us, for what he allows us to experience every day. Because we have much to be thankful for, my dear friends, even in the midst of challenges, we can be thankful. After all, God is with us. Even in the midst of our challenges, the Lord is always near. So how can we not be grateful? The psalmist says, You answered me when I called to you. There are times when we all need answers. God is there to give us his answers to our difficulties and our problems. With his strength, he strengthens us. And so we can say, we are thankful to him for providing answers during our difficult times. For we can safely say, we thank you, O God, that it is not always like this. And when we do that, when we focus on being thankful, we will always find something to rejoice about. Imagine from a prison cell, Paul focused on his blessings, his faith, his friends, and the nearness of his Lord. It is filled with thanksgiving and caused him to rejoice in the Lord. Always remember, the Lord is very near to us all. Paul knew that being thankful and being joyful are really two sides of the same coin. For if we focus on our blessings, being thankful for what we have, it is almost impossible not to be joyful. So I encourage all of us, my dear friends, be thankful for all our blessings and we will rejoice with the Lord always. The psalmist says, you answered me when I called. You encouraged me by giving me strength. We know that the psalmist had it right. Rather than using his power, he depended on God for his power. And as we read that verse, we can learn from his struggle how to be faithful and thankful to God. Obviously, there must have been a period of time in the life of the psalmist when he tried to make it on his own. Just like all of us, from his failure, he came to understand that his success was only when he turned to God's power and not his own willpower. He learned an important life lesson. He could not resist the temptation to sin if he depended on himself. But as soon as he turned from himself to his Savior, he got exactly what he needed encouragement and strength that comes only from God. So what are we thankful for today? We are thankful that God will never give up on us and that he will always be near to us and he will always give us encouragement and strength. His power is always at work in us and through us. There is nothing that pleases God more than 
one of his children depending upon him for survival. And we must never forget that as soon as we call, God answers us. The psalmist also reminds us, when I am surrounded by troubles, you keep me safe. You will do everything you have promised. Beloved in Christ, difficult times will always be upon us. People will walk through the thick of danger, but we can depend upon God to help us with dangerous circumstances. We remember the words of the psalmist in Psalm 23. Even if I go through the darkest and deepest, I will not be afraid, Lord for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff, they protect me. So let us see God working in all things at all times in our lives. And let us, like St. Paul and the psalmist, always rejoice in the Lord, always seeing the Lord's hand in every aspect of our lives, even when things are not right. We believe that God can bring good out of every challenge we face, that every challenge we face gives us one more reason to rejoice and to be thankful to Almighty God. Let us therefore turn our worries into prayers. For Paul reminds us, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. The apostle thanks God for their faith and love that are growing out on a fertile soil, that it is their hope in Jesus Christ. May our hope and our faith also continue to grow in the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That love along with our Christian faith allows us to receive what God offers to us through his son, Jesus Christ, in the gospel, the good news. The gospel, my dear friends, not only speaks about Jesus' life, death, and, and resurrection, it's also a power through which God works in all of us. The gospel bears fruit and grows. It produces not just a few understanding of who God is, and God's adopted sons and daughters are, but also the new creation that is faith, love, and hope in action. So when we do these things, we can't help but rejoice in the Lord. Today and always, we always have the opportunity to give God thanks, no matter what it may be. And so, as you and I Continue to do all these things. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Let us come to God in the fellowship of prayer. Let us bow. We give thanks to you, O Lord, with all our hearts. For you have exalted above everything your name and your word. We cried out to you for help, and you have heard us. We have walked in the midst of trouble, and you have preserved our lives. We have hungered and thirsted for your higher blessings, and you have given us the bread of life and a cup of salvation. We have lost our sense of purpose, and you have fulfilled our lives with fresh meaning and new direction. Today, we thank you for your word, read and proclaimed by your servant. We thank you, O Lord, for this program, the moments of inspiration. Bless all those who participated in this activity and initiative of the Presbyterian Church of Trinidad and Tobago. To you be all blessings, all kingdom, all power, all glory. Bountiful God, gracious Savior, one with God, spirit of unity, hear and receive our prayer. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.
friends. As we come to the end of today's episode, we are indeed grateful to the choir of the Norfolk Presbyterian School, who was trained by the music coordinator, Mr. Akhil Arendel, and the acting principal, Mrs. Nila Rampasad Ramsey. Special thanks to the members of staff who graced us with their melodious voices. Many thanks to the acting principal, Mrs. Nila Rampasad Ramsing, and members of staff for organizing the items for today's episode. Sincere thanks to the Interim Minister of the Nariva Mayaru Pastoral Region, Rev. Radhika Samuel Munu, for the inspiring message that she shared with us today. As we conclude today's program, we thank you for spending this time with us, and we pray that today's message has touched your hearts. We encourage you to visit our YouTube channel, Presbyterian Church Trinidad and Tobago, where you can find all our episodes uploaded. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at Moments of Inspiration or on Instagram using the handle Presbyterian Church TT. We also welcome you to join us in person on Sunday mornings at any of our 108 congregations nationwide. If you have any further questions about the Presbyterian Church, please do not hesitate to contact us via our website at www.pctt.org.tt. I leave you now with today's moment of inspiration. Always have a thankful heart, for the Lord sees the hearts of each one of us. May you always rejoice in the Lord.